we already have <laughs> we already have somebody fledged into this guys thank you so much for joining me whether you're catching the show live with you here right now or if you're gonna watch on the replay I appreciate it thank you so much if you don't know what this show is this is the weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil that's me aka travel man Dan and well what I do on this show is I go ahead and I talk about last week's video that came out on my channel and I preview a little bit of what's coming out the next week on my channel and all while doing this I suck down two beers and I talk a little bit about them I give them a score I rate them it's very blue collar I'm not an aficionado I'm not a, um, a connoisseur of beer I just really like to drink I like to drink beer and well I give it to you straight and tell you what I think of that particular beer so hopefully you can watch the show you can get excited about the shows that I have coming up or the shows that you may have missed or you can check out some of these delicious beers that I review and well comment and let me know what you think about them so Without further ado, high five to you, Tony. Thank you for joining me. We already got one, two people live. It is a crowded house already. So thanks. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Today is a fun, fun episode. I got a lot of things I want to go over. I want to talk about some really cool episodes that we did, uh, that I'm going to do. It's just going to be really fun. But without any further talk about anything else, let's get right into it. Tony had already alluded to the fact that I was a brave man to talk about it. That's right, because today, today we're going to go ahead and review the subject of the word that is on everybody's lips. We are going to go ahead and review, da -da 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 -da. ladies and gentlemen, Corona. That's right, we are drinking Corona beer. Corona beer, Corona. Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, okay? We are going to try this sucker out. Um, this has no correlation to the super serious virus that is being spread globally. This is just, well, it's time to drink a little Corona. So um, we're going to go ahead and crack this sucker open. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, well, I've probably drank over 100 Coronas in my life, so I'm very familiar with the taste. But maybe you've never tried a Corona. Maybe um, you saw some weird, stupid meme out there thinking, oh, people stopped drinking Corona because of the coronavirus. I mean, it doesn't get any dumber than that, right? Um, but boy, right here today, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give you my opinion of what I think of the Corona Extra. It is made in Mexico, but it is bottled and brewed in uh, Cervicia Stinks. Um, an actual uh, content of what it is. It doesn't really say in the bottle, or maybe I'm missing it, but uh, I know it's a week. It wouldn't be right if we didn't do this show and get cost a sniff away. If you've ever drank a Corona, you know what I'm talking about, and that's the skunk zone, all right? This little capsule, this little empty area right here is filled with some of the most potent, rank, skunkiest smell that you've ever smelled. And when you crack open a Corona, it's a clear first sip of the mar side. I don't know if you're sitting in there and you want to post up and drink a 12 to 15 pack of these. This is a really good beer to drink in. You can see just by the color, it's not too dark. Therefore, it usually isn't as strong. Now, I've had some lighter beers that are super strong, but typically speaking, the lighter the beer is, the, str the, the weaker it is, and the darker it is, tends to be packed with uh, all kinds of... Um, like really thick hops and malt and barley and makes the beer really strong. Um, now, one thing that you may be wondering right away is, why doesn't he put a lime in it? <laughs> and well, the reason I didn't put a lime in it because I'm not sure where the lime whole tradition came from. I've read about it, I've heard about it, I've heard things about them back in the old days when they used to be on the ships and they used to be traveling, that the iron cap on the bottle would then create like little rust barnacles. So they used limes because the limes were prevalent on the boat because they prevented scurvy and um, they would ring around there. It would wipe off those little rust barnacles and then they would be able to drink it. Somehow it fell into it. I'm not sure. I've also heard sometime back uh, about 30 years ago, 
um, somebody had put the lime in there to prevent against that skunky flavor. Now, that skunky flavor is attributed to, well, this white bottle. So in the light, the UV lighting is supposed to refract and make the beer taste a little bit skunky. Um, that's why people always pride themselves on a brown bottle. I know there are companies out there that use green bottles. There has been some myth about green bottles also being skunked. I'm not sure what it is. Heineken definitely uh, tastes like that. Corona smells and does have a little bit of skunkiness to it but nevertheless not a bad beer if you know the true origin of why the lime is dumped inside the bottle of corona please put it down in the comments below me my community anybody please who tell me how this goes because i'm dying to find out what the actual answer is but okay so now going on to the show now let's talk about uh, last week. Last week I put out a Food Friday video. And if you're a little unfamiliar with my channel, let me break it down to you real quick. I put out a Food Friday video every other Friday where I try out delicious foods all around the world and maybe introduce you, inspire you to try something out. Then, <clears throat> now that because of the coronavirus breakout, I'm unable to go ahead and go into restaurants and film. So we also do a fun little segment where I do it from my car. It's called Fast Food Friday. And it's a lot of fun for me because there's a lot of fast food restaurants out here in the United States where people are always curious and they always hear jokes or they always hear um, like uh, references to fast food joints here in America. So it's nice to put out there and make a video and review these kinds of restaurants so that the world can see. So that somebody from Sweden can see what it's like to go to Sonic Burger. Or somebody sitting at their house in Egypt can figure out what is Wendy's, right? And um, the Popeye's chicken sandwich. So I like to do these fast food, uh, food Friday. So I was able to go ahead and <laughs> scurvy, eh? You got scurvy. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, that's pretty funny, actually, when you think about it. It always reminds me of old pirate movies, you know, talking about scurvy. Um, so, yeah, so their, their past week's Friday video, it's up on my channel. You can go ahead and check it out. It's going to be freaking awesome. You're going to love it. It is a really obscure kind of fast food restaurant that I've only seen in California and maybe Nevada or Arizona, but definitely out west because I've never seen it back east. And I'm talking about the schnitz. Wiener schnitzel. Wiener schnitzel is freaking awesome. It's a hot dog joint. You can go ahead and you can get a chili cheese dog. You'll see me devour one of them. I went ahead and had a Polish dog where it's a Polish sausage. And then on top of it is a whole bunch of sauerkraut with mustard. My pops makes really good uh, Polish sausages ones. And then my favorite hot dog that they have over there is the Chicago dog. And the cool thing is, is you can order uh, beef, pork, or... Um, uh, Let's say, what did I say? Beef, pork, and um, oh shoot, I forget what the other one was sausage. Uh, so, but a mixture of them, I think it was. But anyway, I got the Chicago dog. If you've never had it before, check out my video. The Chicago dog is awesome. They put um, they put pickles on it. They put relish. They put ketchup, mustard. They put uh, uh, a giant pickle spear, and they use these. Uh, I think they're Salerno peppers. Typically, I think Chicago dog, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you're from Chicago, let me know down in the comments below. But they put sprinkled celery salt, which really gives it a, ah, this is chef. This is chef, you know what I mean? But awesome video, awesome time. Then I finish it off with some jalapeno poppers. And if you're unfamiliar with Wiener Schnitzel, check out that video. It was really cool, really interesting. Because, you know, you got your fast food at hamburger joints. You got thousands of them. And you got your fast food tacos okay and you got your fast food well subs i guess kind of you know it's kind of like a gray line you kind of got to go in there but how many fast food hot dog places do you have you know not too many right and the thing i love about wiener schnitzel is um the chili cheese dog you know it's like it's just a regular size chili cheese dog on white white wonder bread but it's so warm the bread and melted cheese and the hot dog it's like you you feel like you could just roll it into one ball and just eat it it's delicious you know um definitely encourage you guys if you live in the united states and you live near a wiener, schnit wiener schnitzel um yeah tra travel man dan versus food dude i don't know man I, I would love that show honestly that that would be an amazing show 
I think I would do pretty good. You know, I've seen some competitive eaters out there. <laughs> I don't think I could do what they do. I, I've seen this one guy on YouTube. He's freak. I mean, dude eats like eight pounds. Like, um, and he does it fast too. So, you know, but I would definitely be willing to give it a try. Where I would do really well is like, um, like fast foods and and uh, and burgers and good old American style food. I don't know how I would do on like chicken wings and inferno like hot stuff, right? <laughs> but um, but I would love, I would love, I would love to be the host of uh, uh, Man versus Food, Travel Man Dan versus Food. So if you haven't heard already, I, I don't know if uh, I'll drop it in there real quick right now. I'm going to be eventually changing the name of the channel to the Danny Soleil channel, which is my real name and then each program will be its own show so on the Danny okay, so you have the network YouTube you have the channel is going to be the Danny Soleil channel and the show will be the Travel Man Dan show the Food Friday show and the weekly beer and video review show I just felt like it was better I met with some people we talked about branding I think it was just an overall better look for me to kind of brand myself as a host as an entertainer and then have those each individual shows you'll still have the great enthusiasm you'll still have travel man dan exactly the way i've been doing it it's just that the channel name will be changing to danny soleil so without further ado and uh, as we're rambling on guys i want to say thank you for you guys and if you're joining me live here or if you're watching me on the replay thanks a lot if you haven't already can you go ahead and hit that sub button right there go ahead ring the bell Give me a like. Go ahead and share it. Sharing my videos really helps me. I'm on a hard push to try to get to 10,000. I really want to get to 10,000 subs so that I can get into the studios at, at YouTube. Um, and drink it through a mask, please. That's funny. Uh, you're awesome. Um, I'm going to hit that. Nate, what's up, Burger Boy? How you doing over there? <laughs> drink it through a mask. Okay. Um, I used to have my mask from China around here, but... You know, I don't have it anymore. So, but anyway, here we go. Let's give a second sip to the Corona. Yeah, it's refreshing. You know what you're going to get with Corona, you know. Um, definitely, um, definitely. What's up, duty? All right. Definitely a little bit of a skunky taste to it. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Corona, it does have that little bit of backwash that tastes like skunk. Not overpowering and definitely not the same skunky hoppy flavor that you get from a strong IPA. Just an overall uh, good beer. You know what you're getting with the Corona. And don't worry, you're not going to get the virus. Okay, don't be a schmo. Okay, don't be an asshat. You're not going to get uh, the coronavirus if you drink Corona beer. So, moving right along, that's what I want to talk about the whole coronavirus. I know I'm probably going to get pegged on this video. I'm not going to make any money on it. Monetary strike. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. You know, um, but I do want to talk to you guys. Would you say that the glass color changes the beer flavor? Yes, I do. We Listen, we just talked about this name, and I definitely think it has something to do with the way that the, the glass, the UV lights the way that they're refracted through the glass color, especially the clear. And I've always said Heineken has that same skunky flavor. Definitely changes the taste of the beer. Now, for better or for worse, some people don't give a damn. And some people say that that's why they put the lime in there, is to offset that taste. I'm not really sure, but um, I definitely know 100% that it definitely tastes a little bit skunky. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Am I going to stop buying it probably not i mean like i said this is the kind of beer where you're going out you want to play a little volleyball you want to pick up about a 12 pack or maybe drink 15 maybe have two or three other fat tires before you get into the game then you polish off your own 12 pack easy smooth nice beer to just go out on a summer day and um, a beach action beer that's right that's what it is it's a good beach action beer Holla, who's ready for beach action? I will be coming to you this summer from the beach like I did last uh, year. If you haven't seen that video where I was the weekly beer and video review show, I did it at the beach. I'm going to do another one this year. I'll go ahead and throw that one up there right now if you haven't seen it. But, um, yeah, you should check that one out. It's a lot of fun. But the coronavirus, look it. There's a couple things that I will say, and then we're going to just move on from it. You know, stay safe. Listen to the authoritative people, okay? Listen to 
the Dr. Ferriucci, um, the CDC reports, the people that are talking to you, they're telling you what to do. You know, don't get all freaked out because of your social media news and what you see on Facebook and what you heard from Jenny who told Bill, who might tell Michael, who told Wakai, and then, you know what I'm saying, like this kind of stuff. And don't surround yourself all day long listening to news reports. Um, I've listened to Philip DeFranco. I liked Philip DeFranco. He had a really cool... Um, if you haven't seen Philip DeFranco's new video, uh, he talks about you know the the vaccine and everything like that. So I'm a big fan of Philip DeFranco. He 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 cuts he cuts all the bullshit out and just says it like it is. And and that's what exactly what I mean is like listen to these guys that you know they're just out there talking about you know memes and things like that and scare tactics and stuff like that listen we don't know random question for you while looking for something on Latvia there you were walking and pointing out something in the background he said this might be a castle it could be a dude what's up <laughs> I remember I totally remember that was awesome that castle from Latvia was it was a gun armory it was um it was closed it was like a monument for the people the Latvian people that had just um let me get my facts straight they had just ended the revolution so it's right in downtown uh, <laughs> uh, uh this guy is just a, oh thanks man thank you so much yeah thank you i appreciate it yeah it's um yeah it's you know going out and vlogging and being out there especially in other countries and, and even my own country like it's not easy man people are gonna you know say uh, all kinds of things they're gonna shoot you know shoot you snide comments and stuff but you gotta do it and the reason I do is because I absolutely love it so Greg thank you so much for tuning in for checking out that video for checking out this live stream really I love your country I, I was gonna try to come back this year in July but um, work obligations I'm unable to make it back to Latvia but I will be there the following summer I stay um, I work at a camp out there so love your country I, I love the double hot dog but um but yeah overall Orlando's dope overall it's not easy going out there and vlogging because you never know what you're gonna run into it's you never know you know who's gonna be what um, so you just got to push on through. You got to go through it. And, uh, well, I'm glad that you were able to find some value out of that video. That's awesome. Hell, yeah. Uh, success. I, you know, I could do nothing more at this point today. And I would feel very happy that you were able to see that. So, so thank you. Uh, so, then I found a video. You were on the, the camera. The kids, very nice. They loved you and did a good job. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to keep that a huge mystery. Uh you are my age. No, I'm. <laughs> you think I was born in 1968? I love it. That's awesome. No, I'm a little bit older than that. I mean, I'm a little bit younger than that. And I was born in the 70s. Uh, and so, yeah, um, th those kids were great. I love those kids. I love going out to those camps. Um, <laughs> you guys are great. Quit busting my balls. Come on, man. I know it's my hair. I know I got the bottom. This is the bottom down shirt. Who wears a bottom band? Anybody out there wear the bottom pan shirts? These shirts are great. But anyway, let's go back into what I was talking about before. Guys. <laughs> Dude, I love you, Greg. <laughs> you are awesome. Uh, yeah, I wear older clothes. I know. I know. It's I, I, I'm kind of an old soul, but I'm not that old. I was born in the 70s, in the late 70s. So, yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're getting a kick out of it. Greg, I'm going to drink this one sip for you, man. This is another Corona sip, especially going out to my viewer, Greg. Thanks for checking it out. I ran, you overheard me in Latvia, which then brought you to my channel, which then brought you to this live stream. So I could not be happier. Thank you so much. One at a time, guys, we're, we're, we're making videos and without you as my community, as people that view me, I'm absolutely nothing. So thank you so much for, for hopping on and, and spending a little bit of time with me. Um, this sip is for you, Greg, and I'll let you know what I think of the Corona. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I know Milwaukee people. Milwaukee people are big drinkers, man. Um, hey, do me a favor. Throw in the comments below some some good uh, some good not like Schlitz 
or you know Miller some some other kind of good beer from Milwaukee so I definitely want to support you guys you guys are much like my hometown Buffalo New York so you know shouts out to you Milwaukee Wisconsin you know all about that um, that blue collar feel and I gotta ask you Greg are you familiar with um, Oh, what the hell is his name? Milverine? Do you know Milverine? Please tell me you know Point Beer. Okay. Tell me you know Milverine. If you guys, if you don't know this and you're watching it, this guy is freaking awesome, man. I don't know where I've seen it in, in the video, Smith. Uh, PBR, you know. If you know Milverine, everyone in Milwaukee is supposed to know this legend, but, um, but he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he's, he walks around all the time with his shirt off. He looks like Wolverine. <laughs> and uh, the guy's a classic, dude. Um, so, yeah, shout out to you, Milwaukee. So, does not. Okay, check him out. His name is Milverine. I just seen like a documentary on him on Vice, and it was really cool. Um, so, that's. Um, I'm, but Blatz is a, a old style. I've never heard of Blatz. I've had hams. Is hams from Milwaukee? Uh, yeah, hams is pretty good, so I like drinking that. I like those cheap beers; those are pretty fun. Um, but I'll try some. I want to try some more micro brews from Milwaukee. I heard I hear they got a pretty up and coming <laughs> uh, scene. So, what do you got, Nate? What do you got? Paradox IPA. Where is that out of? Um, is that out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada? Well, anyway, I'll go ahead and keep rolling on, guys. Check this out. Lockdown quarantine. What are you doing? What are you drinking these days? You know, be safe out there. Listen to the right people. Um, and just in, take this time to, without getting too philosophical, take this time to just go ahead and focus. And, and um, Hams is from Burgerville. What? What is Burgerville? The name of the town is called Burgerville. Um, so, yeah, take this time. And reflect back on your life. Enjoy. Do something that you always want to do. The stuff is going to clear up. We're going to be back out there in the rat race. Wherever you are in the world. Um, so please go ahead and just take this time. Relax. Uh, do your best not to panic. Okay. What's the deal with uh, with the toilet paper man? You know what I mean? Haven't you ever heard? You know. Uh, just uh, use, use a hose or something. Or hop into the shower. If worse came to worse. Alright. You know. Uh, <laughs> no about three cases of beer and the cashier loved it on the way three pages. <laughs> Atta boy, Greg. I'm so glad you found my channel. I actually, see, you actually see me. That's so funny because that's how I was, man. I stocked up on the beer. Everybody's getting toilet paper. Now you might need more toilet paper if you drink a lot of beer, and you know, <laughs> know what I'm talking about. But um, but yeah, it's just um, it's just a really crazy time right now. So just settle in relax take the take this time to you know enjoy yourself thanks for spending time with me let's move on to the next thing and that's we're going to talking about free agent frenzy guys if you don't know just panic at the disc if, if you don't know and you've never watched any of my shows i'm a diehard buffalo bills fan and i gotta say the front office has done a remarkable job and we are ready to go super bowl okay we picked up stefan diggs okay greg i'm sure you're uh let's see being up in milwaukee you're probably a green bay fan are you possibly a minnesota fan um nate i believe you are an eagles fan so how'd you guys do what'd you think what'd you think of the stefan diggs pickup not to mention that i think a lot of picks and free agency and stuff go under the radar. And one of the huge things that Packers, nice, okay. I see you might be getting Clay Matthews. Um, you signed a lot. You gave up a lot for Jimmy Graham. I got to be honest with you. I was a little shocked with that move. Um, so Jimmy Graham, let's see if he's got something left in the thing. That was Bills, but <laughs> yeah, we heard them all. Yeah, that's it broke my heart. So. Anyway, but yeah, I'm really excited. The guy that I'm most excited about is I want to see if we can get more out of the tank of Vernon Butler, okay? Athletic freak, defensive end, could play tackle. Um, definitely think he could be somebody that could go ahead and um, really make a mark. I just saw something that was put out from the NFL, and they took the number one AFC team and uh, fans and the number one uh, NFC, and it uh, remarkably was the Bills and the Packers. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't think it was, man. I I think 
the Bills had so much draft capital that they weren't able they weren't able to keep the ones that they already had. So whatever, we'll find out. This this year is going to be freaking awesome. Hey, anybody else excited about Tom Brady leaving the AFC East? Woohoo! Yeah, I mean. It would really suck if we saw. Uh, no, it would be awesome if we saw him in the Super Bowl and then we beat him. And uh, because they got, you know, they got a good shot now with Tampa because um, that division isn't super strong that he's in. It's good, but um, but last year, <laughs> what did she? I love it. Yeah, last year they um they were won like they lost seven games within seven points. All you know, so they definitely have some talent. Goodwin and. Mike Evans and O.J. Howard for Tom Brady. Oh man, this could be, this could be another breakout season in, in terms of numbers and stats because Bruce Arian, you know, is just gonna let him go out there and throw it. But anyway, that's my opinions on free agency. Let's sit back. Let's see who is gonna get the remaining good players. I'd like to see where Jameis ends up, Cam Newton, that kind of thing. Guys, thank you so much for joining me uh, thus far. Now, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about what I did this week right before the shutdown. It is well, I'm getting more and more into the voiceover. So I go to voiceover cartoon school. As you can tell, I, uh, I, I got a different, uh, I got a lawnmower for a voice, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot more to it. If you don't know, my act profession is an actor. So now I've also dipping my feet into the voiceover. So hopefully you'll be able to see me on commercials, cartoons, and video games real soon. So uh, really fun, really exciting stuff. And uh, that's what goes on with me during the week. Put down in the comments below if you've ever tried voiceover. Or what do you do with your time? Do you go to school at night? Do you do anything creative? Anything that keeps you going aside from just your regular nine to five job? What kind of activities do you go out there and do in life? I'd love to hear from you. And let's, uh, let's connect on that level. Uh, another thing is it's time for another sip of the Corona. All right, so the Corona doing not, not bad. It's weird. It's got like a really sour, malty taste to it. Definitely still wavering on that skunky flavor. Not bad. Like I said, I've drinking over hundreds of these. You know what it's you know what you're gonna get with it. It's not a bad beer. It's not the one that I'd go to all the time, but definitely not a bad choice. Um it's a light, refreshing beer. It's not gonna knock your socks off. Okay, I'm more into like an IPA. You need to loud up that ton of line. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I wanted to see what it tastes like regular. So now one of the things I do want to talk about is during this whole virus situation is the local businesses that are getting hurt. Like I go to Wiener Schnitzel, but I'm also going to do videos on local businesses in terms of um, what you call it, uh, the restaurants and stuff like that. So be sure to go ahead if you can in any other small way that you can order one night a week to a small business in your local area. Milwaukee, I know you got some great food. Um, Las Vegas, I know you got some great food. And anywhere you are in the world, these people are suffering most because their entire business is, uh, is restaurant and it's been decimated because we're not allowed to have people more than 10 around these restaurants. Restaurants. Hey, just curious, Greg, what is the Milwaukee food? Like, what is, obviously, chicken wings is for me, um, being from Buffalo. Uh, Philadelphia is the cheesesteak. Uh, fried chicken tends to be from the south. Okay, what... Hey, Baro, we have our friend Baro all the way from India. What's up, man? How you doing? Brats. Nice. <laughs> nice, dude. Hell yeah. So brats are the thing they do. Polish sausage. Nice. So have you seen my video on Wiener Schnitzel? You need to check it out. Do you have Wiener Schnitzel? Probably not. Cheese curds. I've heard of these things, but I've never actually tried them. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look for them. But um yeah, that's uh I heard they're pretty good. Oh, you do have Wiener Schnitzel. That's cool. That's really cool. Um <laughs> delicious. I did a video on them on Friday, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, it's it's a pretty good time, man. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is well, let's go ahead and finish off. Food. Yeah, I watch your foot. Oh my. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, I'm a pretty sane guy, but uh, I get excited in front of the camera. I uh, he's, he doesn't care. He, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that, <laughs> 
<laughs> you are awesome. Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate that, Greg. I really do. I really appreciate that. I'm just going to do me, and um, I do it the way that I do it. I, you know, like I said, Oscar Wilder. You know what? I'll save that to the quote of the week, okay? And um, we may have used it before. We may have not, but, uh, but I'm going to use it again just in case. All right, let's go ahead and slug down this Corona. Nice, okay, it's empty, it's clear. Like I said many times already in the show, still got a bit of a sour, skunky flavor. Not overpowering. I think the lime would offset it, but without the lime, it's still pretty good. It's a beer, you know what you're gonna get when you ask for a beer and they say, yeah, I got a Miller, I got a Corona, I got a Heineken. You know what you're gonna get on each one of them. That falls in that category. Solid beer, will I drink it again? Absolutely. Do I go hunting and wanting and craving for it? Eh, not so much. Okay, so I'm going to give it a good score, but I'm not going to give it a great score. It is a delicious beer. Don't shy away. The Corona will not give you the virus. It will give you a nice, easy, subtle buzz. I'm going to give it a 7.5. 7.5 for the Corona. It's the old standby, right? All right. Good, Barrow. Good to see you. We got Barrow from India. We got Greg from Milwaukee. We got Nate live from Las Vegas. Who else and where are you from? Let me know. Shout it out. Tell me where you're from. Thanks a lot for joining me on the weekly beer and video review show. I'm your host, Danny Soleil, and let's keep on rolling. Okay, so the next beer, the next beer is, I want to talk to you, Orlando. Greg, I'm sorry, he's from Orlando. Okay, but you are from Milwaukee. All right, the next beer, sticking on the subject of Corona. Guys, I'm bringing in da, 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 Corona Lights. Awesome. Yes, awesome Corona Light. Okay, the same great beer. Um, it is the Light Cerveza. And if you don't know what Cerveza is, it means beer. Okay, so um, it is uh, from Cerevisiro Modala, Mexico. This one is going to be lighter, okay, than the other one in terms of alcohol percentage. But um, now, this is what I was talking to about before. You see this little cap right here? Right here is all the skunky smell, okay? The kind of like a sour, kind of farty, kind of sewer smell right in this thing. So when you crack it open, you take a whiff and... <whistles> wow, okay. All right, just the... No, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. And if you've ever had one of these, you know what I'm talking about. Usually when you're at a, a bar or a restaurant, it's already cracked and poured in a cup. But we get the luxury to smell that little action right now. So let's go ahead and pop this top. Oh, yeah. All right, so definitely brought on by the amount of hops and barley in a beer because this is the lighter version, so there wasn't as strong of a smell. Okay, so... Going ahead, and we already tried the Corona, keeping with the theme of the whole Corona and the situation that's going on, the global pandemic. We are drinking Corona Light for our second beer, and let's go ahead and give it a swig and see what we think of the Corona Light. Ah, okay. All right. Man. Okay, it's, it's got a little bit of a bite to it. It's not as strong, definitely smooth. It reminds me, it takes me back to when I was a kid and I would be in my father's arm. I mean, a little boy, like a little tyke. And my father would have like a cigarette in his mouth and he'd have a beer and he'd take a swig and uh, he would burp and it would blow right into his kid's face. That kid was me. I'll never forget that smell, Pop. Thanks for burping my face when I was like three years old. Between a cigarette and his beer, that's what this kind of reminded me of. I don't know why, it just did, but... um. And the old man used to drink like Jenny and old Milwaukee. But not bad. The Corona Light, not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is the video we're rolling into next week. Guys, I already told you about Food Friday. Now our other show is the Travel Man Dan Show. And it comes out every other Wednesday. So it's great places all around the world. Cool people. Interesting, fun things. And, well... The next video is because we're quarantined. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going <laughs> to. Yes, Nate is shouting out Barrow. Barrow, meet Nate. Nate, meet Barrow. So 
we are going to go ahead and we are quarantined. We're kind of in a lockdown situation, so I really can't go to any place. All the museums, all the cool places that I, I wanted to try to investigate around here in Los Angeles. Well, they've been closed. So um, the thing about me and travel and Travel Man Dan is when I'm not traveling, when I'm not over in Latvia and I'm not in Europe and stuff, I live in a great city of Los Angeles, so people come here all the time. So I use Los Angeles to Vegas to San Diego as kind of a guide for people to, you know, as they travel here, what can they eat? What can they see? What can they do? So if you know I'm grounded for a little bit, I'll just keep making videos on Los Angeles. And then about two or three times a year, I'm off to Europe. I'll I'll be going to Asia I'll be down in South America lots of fun cool stuff but this week we're completely solid we're stuck in the home we're in quarantine so I wanted to do a fun thing and if you don't know me if you know a little bit about my personal life before I was a kindergarten teacher I absolutely loved it I had a great time with the kids I had fun I used to show up and just be off the wall and get the kids all bonkers and stuff but one of my favorite things to do was have story time because I could do voices and I could have some fun when I was reading. And the kids, whatever, you know, 15 to 20 kids, they're just sitting there like this. Mr. D, Mr. D, turn it, you know what I mean? They just love it. They love when I go ahead and read. And so that's what we're, the video is coming up next week. Next week's Travel Man Dan won't be traveling, but if you have kids, stick them down in front of my channel and let them watch. Or if you're an adult and you want to see an adult make a stooge of himself, you can check me out because in honor of his birthday month, this is what Travel Man Dan will be reading. And this is... Dan, we're going to be doing some... Nate, I'll get back to your question. My fa Okay, my favorite video... That I've ever, my fa okay, my favorite video that I've ever done of Travel Man Dan would probably be when I went to, let's see, when I went and I worked on a bee farm. I worked with a guy, I, I, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, my favorite one was probably the bee farm, okay? I really had a good time, and I also had time two weeks ago out at Vasquez Rocks. But check it out, guys. This is what I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be doing the cat in the hat, okay? And I'm going to be reading a little bit of this action. Wacky Wednesday, okay? Um, so this is going to be fun. This is going to be exciting. This is what we're going to be putting out. So I know people are, are in lockdown situations. I know they're in a kind of a quarantine. And to celebrate the great Dr. Seuss, I'm going to be reading Man Dan, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan, Danny Soleil. And we're going to be reading you some books. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I have no idea, but it should be fun. This is my channel. That's the great thing about it. I love you guys. I love my community. But uh, when it comes down to it, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. And I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. So this is what we're doing. Going to have some fun with it. Um, so that's coming out Wednesday. Be sure to check it out. Let's go back into the Corona Light. Okay. And this is for Baro. And this is for you who has supported me from the beginning, my friend, from India, who saw my videos. I, want, I will not... <laughs> <laughs> does your father like hey michelle does my father like cold cuts <laughs> yes he does my father is the captain of cold cuts um he likes the cheaper meats he likes he likes his bolognese you know he likes his fried bologna he likes um the the um sa uh, salamis uh definitely a ham man okay He's, I don't know how he feels about turkey and stuff, but I know he likes them stacked all together. That man loves some cold cuts. Yeah, so, all right, let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, does your father like the Shanghai Brewery? All these questions about my father. Yes, my father absolutely loves the Shanghai Brewery. His favorite place, though, is the Buffalo Tap Room. And if you had never seen my video on the Buffalo Tap Room, I'll go ahead and throw it up there right now where I go ahead and eat the Cajun chicken wings. In my opinion, probably one of the top five places in Buffalo, New York to get chicken wings. Because what they do is they go ahead and they, they spice them up and they fry them and they, they make them Cajun style. But then they top them off on the grill. And they are 
this is chef huh they're beautiful so i know pops loves cold cuts pops loves them wings and uh yes he definitely likes the shanghai brewery the corona light not a bad taste not a bad taste at all just like a corona just a little bit easier you can almost taste the separation in the beer of the and the water so it's um it's a unique flavor this one, I'm, I definitely think this is good summertime brew. Whether you're uh, hanging out with your friends, maybe you're down in, 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 the, in the lot at the castle's house and you want to put down about 20 of them, this is the kind of beer you want to get into. I'll go ahead and set that down. And now I want to talk about this day in history. Do, 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 do. Let's go. Let's go. This is a new segment that I started adding in. And let's talk about a little bit about this day in history. Now, before, would you say Corona is the Jose Cuervo of Mexican beer? Yeah, I would say that. That's probably accurate, my friend. That's probably, you know, it, it's it's like the Budweiser of American beer. You know, it's just like the cheap kind of like, you know, you, you can pick up a 12-pack and bring it to a party and nobody's going to, everybody's going to drink it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you bring these IPAs and, you know, right away, most 90% of the women are like, ew, <laughs> nah. I, you know, and then you got a couple of guys that like, I don't do IPAs, you know what I mean? Because they did them before and they either got blacked out or they had the total shits the next day, you know. But, um, but Corona is something that you can bring to the party and everybody enjoys it. It's definitely an easy beer and we're working our way through these two ones. Not bad at all. But this day in history, now before you jump down my throat. I want to tell you guys, I'm not a history teacher. I'm not a history aficionado. I'll just tell you what happened on today being uh, March 22nd and then what happened that day. That's it. So take it for what you're worth. Take it for what it's worth. Um, Corona and Corona Light. Duff, what's up? We got another Kenmore boy. What is up, Duff? Oh, yes, that's what we are doing. Beware of the Corona, not the Corona or Corona Light. It is a lot of fun here. And now I got all my homies. I got some family. I got some friends in India. Guys, now this day in history, on March 27th, 19, 1765, the Stamp Act was passed. And if you're unfamiliar with what the Stamp Act was, it was basically... Britain's way of charging the colonists some uh, an extra tax being that they had to whatever letterhead they had um, whatever letterhead they had whatever piece of paper they had they had to have a, a tax on it which was marked by British Parliament and that was 1765 so that's what happened that day then now guys March 22nd 1908 the famous author Louis Lamar was born. And if you don't know Louis, he is uh, widely known as maybe the greatest storyteller in American history. He writes all these great like Western books and all these Western novels about uh, the OK Saloon and you know hijacking things and just kind of the old, old West. Louis Lamar was born in 1908. Okay, shortly after that, in 1904, on March 22nd, the first color photo was per published in the London Daily. Okay, so 1904, um, the, the first color photo was published. Did I say not shortly after? I meant shortly before. <laughs> Guys, the one thing about doing these live beer and video review shows is uh, after about a half an hour, you start to get a little buzzed. I've been talking straight for 45 minutes now, and sometimes you get mumbled jumbled, so I'm working on it. Definitely when I do the IPAs, it's like, hmm, you know. But anyway, now I want to talk about what happened in Mar on March 22nd, 1933. FDR signs a bill of legislation that allows people for the sale and possession of alcohol, beer and wine, not liquor. So it was right after the whole prohibition and then FDR signed a little thing saying, yes, you can sell beer, you can sell wine, let's get it on, no more speakeasies, let's get cronked up in here. That's right. And um, now, then shortly after that, March 22nd, 1935, the country or the region of Persian, Persia was now named Iran, okay? So what we know is Iran used to be called Persia. That's about the whole Persian Empire and stuff like that. That happened in 1935. And lastly, on March 22nd, 1963, the Beatles 
first album released in England. Okay, Beatlemania. Let's see if I can do my hair like the Beatles. All right, Beatlemania. That's it, 1963. How do we, what do we think, guys? Is this Beatlemania? If you like the Beatles, do you like the Stones? What's your favorite Beatles song? Where, what is it? Is it Hey Jude? Okay, and what is it now? Um, tell me down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, now let's get rid of this. We'll go back to the Corona light. Duff, good to see you here. You know, for a long time, I don't think there even was a Corona light. But, uh, but it's nice. It's a... Uh, much like the regular corona um it's just a little bit lighter it's there's nothing else more to it and in celebration we are representing corona because of all the recent talk of the coronavirus and the news and everything so please once again be reminded that drinking corona light i don't know buddy i don't know about that and drinking regular corona will not give you the virus will not give you the virus all right, let's go ahead now. And this little segment, oh, guys, since I got a few of you guys on here right now that uh, that I know and watch me, cheers to my brother. He was born on, oh, Mikey D. Oh, Duff, rest in peace, your brother, man. He was awesome. Cheers to Mike. I'm going to drink to that. Duff was awesome. If you grew up in Kenmore and you grew up on North End, Somerton, Eisman, your brother was great to us growing up. Um, yeah, that's awesome, Duff. And um, good to know. But guys, right here, this is what I wanted to show you. This is a quick sneak peek look. First ever. You guys have all known. You, If you know me, you know I've talked about it. I'm making the Travel Man Dan Coloring Book. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kickstart or go fund. I haven't figured out the logistics yet, but I'm going to create this coloring book. You're going to be able to donate to the coloring book, which will get you the coloring book. And then I will take that money and eventually build up whatever the goal is. And then I will fly to certain countries, whether they're in Asia, Africa, South America, wherever, and I will donate to kids a portion of that that you have bought off the, for the coloring book. A portion of that to the proceeds will go to kids with, um, you know, living in underdeveloped areas that need help with school supplies. Because let's say I go to a small town in the Philippines and I donate a thousand dollars. Now, a thousand dollars to a school here in the United States really isn't going to do much. But a thousand dollars to a bunch of kids in the Philippines could buy them a whole bunch of paper, pencils, uh, books, uh, curriculums, things like this. And what I'll then do is go, I'll go ahead and film that adventure. And then so donating to the cause will not only get you the coloring book, but it'll also get you the episode that you can watch later. So lots of fun stuff. Viral, I know you're in northern uh, Bangladesh, India. So I want to keep in touch with you and hopefully we can go ahead and one day worked something out but i want to give you a sneak preview of the coloring book i have the whole thing here who wants to see a page who wants to see one quick page of it i'll go ahead and show you one quick page and that's it that's all i'm going to allude to and this is one of the drawings it is from egypt check it out there is travel man dan on okay check out the pyramids check out the sphinx that is the first page of the Travel Man Dan coloring book. It is going to be about 14 to 16 pages. I have all the other drawings right here. I am excited. I'm pumped up about that. That's um, you know, that's a that's me. Being, thank you, Nate. I appreciate that. That's me being able to go out here and create not only for for my own purposes of wanting to be an entertainer, to be a creator, but using my platform to go out there and help people. Um, yes, yes, that would be awesome. I want to see Cooper. And um, so I'm really pumped about that. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'll keep you guys informed. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. I will definitely let you guys know as that gets further. Now what I have to do is find uh, the proper publishing and go ahead and get this made. Then with the marketing strategy that I'm using, because one thing I want to also say is I'm not making a dime off this thing. This is no profit at all for me. The profit for me was being able to go over there and, and make videos and then expand my brand and my channel and stuff like that. So in terms of like 
uh, monetary where I get money to myself right away. I'm not doing it for nothing and I would do it for nothing. It's, it's an, an ability to go ahead and change my game and just go ahead and help people. So looking forward to that. Now let's get into what are you, uh, what are you reading? What are you watching? Okay, what are you reading? What are you watching? Is, uh, well, this is what I'm reading, guys. I don't know what you're reading. I don't know what you're watching, but don't sit home. Don't vegetate the whole time while you're there. Always be creative. Use the imagination. Use your brain by reading. I know it sounds foolish. I know it sounds like, like an adult talking to a kid, but it's so true. As an actor, as a creative person, I, I need to be fulfilled, whether it's 20 minutes or an hour and a half a, a, a day. Just read something, and there's tons of stuff out there. And definitely watch something, too. But here is what I'm reading. I am reading Casablanca, okay? It is the original script for Casablanca. This is what I like to read. I like to read um, scripts because you never know when uh, somebody's going to call and they're going to say, yes, um, hi, ASM, what's up? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, and, yes, I would hope to get to Bangladesh and help you guys out, Bob Barrow. But yes, this is what I like to read because being an actor, you're going to get scripts from time to time. They're going to go ahead and you want to be able to, you know, just there's little things. There's a rhythm. There's a way of, of reading scenes and, and reading stuff um, as an actor would instead of a novel, go ahead and reading a script. So I'm reading uh, Casablanca. The movie was Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. Uh, if, of course, you probably have heard it before. You know what I'm talking about. It's phenomenal. The, the, the script is really good. Um, about a few pages into it, so looking forward to reading all that. So if you could, please go ahead and tell me down in the comments below what you're reading. Michelle, if you're still there, I know you're a reader. I know you like to read tons. So, uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> Here's looking at you, kid. Yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you're going ahead and you're reading. I'd love to hear from you. And, uh, well, the next thing I want to talk about is what are you watching, okay? And, as we know, um, sports are on hiatus, okay? So, there's no hockey, because the Sabres were probably going to win the Stanley Cup this year. Um, there's no basketball, unfortunately, because Lakers and Clippers are doing phenomenal, and that's where I live, so the buzz around that. And I'm a Clippers fan, but um, I was looking forward to that. So, Baseball spring training was going to be over, and baseball would have been starting in four days. So, kind of bummer. But what is really cool is, I if you haven't already, and I get no money for this, so if, if you want, I can go ahead and put it down in, uh, in the description. But ESPN Plus, um, it's really cool because they have all the 30 for 30s there for free. They have all kinds of extra content. You can get all kinds of fights. And that's what I'm watching is the best of boxing. And if you go there, they have like... Over 150 of the famous fights. Like I watched the other day, I watched Hearn versus, Hearns versus Hagler. Slugfest, I mean, just watch it. Um, Dawa Hoyo versus Julio Cesar Chavez. We have Ali and Foreman that I watched last night. The Rumble in the Jungle and Zaire. And they're, they're okay, they're not the best, but they're still scratchy and where it's kind of cool to watch a piece of history. And you can, you know, just the announcers and like, when you get shots of the crowd and you know there's Tyson fights on there there's Antonio Tarver there's Manny Pacquiao there's Ali there's there's uh, Rocky Marciano there's tons of old boxing matches and ESPN plus called the best of boxing and that's what I'm watching right now it's phenomenal good stuff Ozark season three is coming out you know what I'm not really into the Ozarks but I know people that are and um, yeah they really like it uh, so uh, yeah that I don't know too much about it so yeah, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the Corona Light, the last swig. Then I'm going to give it a score. And then I'm going to go to the quote of the week. And I'll tell you what, we talked about it a little bit before. I'm going to do something new since I got a few more people on today. Guys, give me a quote. And that's the quote. I'm going to go off of your quote. Okay? The first one up that throws a quote up there, that's the one I'm going to go ahead and make it the quote of the week. We'll do a quick analyzation of it, we'll talk about it, and then we'll end the show on that. So if you have a quote in mind, something good, keep it clean, guys. I don't want to be, you know, disgusting over here. Put it up there and I'll, put, I'll throw it out. Now let's go ahead and drink out the Corona Light. All right. Summertime madness. That's what I think. Okay. This one, 
delicious. As you can see, the clear bottle goes all the way through. Really tasty all the way down. Same as a Corona, pretty much. Just a little bit lighter. Got an easy... There was a sucker born every minute. <laughs> I like that one, Craig. I like that one. That's a good quote. Um, yeah, so really good taste. Um, not much different than a regular Corona, just a little bit lighter. Hence the word Corona Light. So let's bring them both back. Guys, I'm going to give the Corona Light a 7, okay? Great beer, delicious, easy, could drink it well. But we're going to give it a 7. And uh, that's pretty much going to do it for the beer per portion. We have the Corona and the Corona Light. I think you can buy a 12-pack anywhere in the United States for like $13.99, maybe a little bit cheaper in certain places. And sure, God, my husband likes to read the back of cereal boxes. <laughs> that's awesome. Sue Grafton. My husband, I know your husband. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Okay. My husband likes to drink the box, the back of the. <laughs> My husband likes to read the back of cereal boxes. That's hysterical, guys. There it is, Corona Light and Corona. I hope you guys are um, are good with this. This is the review. Definitely a nice beer. And like I said, it's a good beer that you want to go ahead and just just bring it to a party. You know, just bring a twelve pack and you're good to go, guys. So, do I have a quote of the week? Do you guys have anything inspirational? Do you have anything that we can talk about? Any quote of the week? Because if not, I got lots of them. I'll pull something up. And uh, I, I just wanted to do something fun. Maybe grab something from you guys out there. Anybody throw up a quote and then we'll talk about it. And I'll close the show out with that quote of the week. So, anybody? What, what you got, guys? It can be something fun, inspirational about life, about people. It can be something from... Uh, a movie um well if not we're probably gonna have to go with greg's because he was the only one that shouted out so i'll give it a i'll give it a five second countdown five four three two one and that's it okay we're going with yours greg i have some quotes but i wanted to go ahead and have fun today and greg's quote was there's a sucker born every minute is that what it was okay <laughs> <laughs> Duff, what do you got? You're like this. You got something? Okay, there's a sucker born every minute. And yeah, that, that's a that's a pretty funny and accurate statement because, well, as long as there's people out there that are being ready to fool, there's always people that are going to be born and ready to go ahead and, and swindle them. Uh, it's, <laughs> oh, it's a sucker. What did I say? It's a, there's a sucker born every day. And yeah, um... The thing about that is, it's actually, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but it's actually kind of weird because the people out there that think that there's a sucker born every day, well, there's also a shyster born every day. <laughs> so it kind of matches up rather well. So people that are uh, perceived as suckers or are taken advantage of, well, it, it takes two to tango, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. No comment. We're all over the place. Um, Duff, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. We're all over the place with this quote. I'm just going to end it like that. Really, thank you so much, guys. If you're new to this channel, please, we do this every Sunday around 3 o'clock. I do uh, Travel Man Dan shows every other Wednesday. Every other Friday is the Food Friday. If you haven't already, go ahead, hit that sub button, ring the bell. Give me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you liked about this video or check out some of the other videos. If you can share any one of my videos, please, that helps out tremendous because we're trying to reach 10,000 by the end of this year. That would be such an accomplishment for me. Um, if you liked it and you like my gear, I have a show uh, down in the description. I'll go ahead and put a link. Um, great to finally see you. I've just found out. Thank you so much, Greg. No, man, seriously, great to see you. Thank you. We had a great time on the show. I'll be back next week. But um, you can check out my merchandise on my store. There's a link to the description. There's a link in the description that will take you over there. Thank you so much. I'm Travel Man Dan. And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.